Welcome to Variography with Sage 2001. Variography with Sage 2001 is a series of three videos, and we call these videos Variography with Sage 2001 Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Part 1 contains some exploratory data analysis. The motivation behind exploratory data analysis is to learn enough about your data so that you can determine the best values for the SAGE 2001 parameters that control the calculation and modeling of directional sample variograms. In Part 2, we will set up SAGE 2001 and calculate a number of directional sample variograms using the sample data that we explored in Part 1. And in Part 3, we will use SAGE 2001 to model the directional sample variograms that we calculated in Part 2. I hope you enjoy the videos. So what can we hope to learn by doing some initial exploratory data analysis? Well, first we want to know if there are severe spatial trends in our data. Trends may be directional, in which case we can expect an anisotropic variogram model that is congruent with the directions revealed in our exploratory data analysis or what we know about the geology of our ore deposit. Trends in grade, however, are more problematic. For example, if we see the grade increasing across our sample domain in a particular direction, we can expect sample variogram calculation problems and should likely use the correlogram estimator in this case. And secondly, we need to know something about the nominal sample spacing. This knowledge will enable us to correctly set lag distances for variogram calculations. And finally, we want to check for outliers. Although only part Although only several percent of the data may be outliers, they can have a significant impact on the sample variogram calculations, and they often will totally distort the sample variograms. So it's generally a good idea to get rid of outliers for sample variogram calculations. The data set that I'm going to use in this video consists of 89,419 blast hole samples in 3D space. Each blast hole sample is described by X, Y, and Z mid-bench coordinates, and the economic mineral is gold, and the sample assay is fire assay gold. Here is a portion <clears throat> of the blast hole data set shown within a JMP spreadsheet. The JMP spreadsheet is very similar to an Excel spreadsheet, but if you're not familiar with JMP, don't worry about it. So here we can see the total number of samples is 89,419 as shown within the red freehand circle. The first three columns contain X, Y, and Z sample coordinates, followed by the fire assay sample. The column labeled bench contains the bench elevation and is useful for making level maps. Column IAU contains fire assay gold indicators. The indicators are defined at the 0.2 the 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 0 0.95 quantiles of the blast hole grade distribution. These are useful for making level maps where each indicator then is given a special color. And finally, the columns labeled XR and YR are rotated coordinates. I computed these so I could show you a rotated map of the sample values. You will see this in the next several slides. The blast hole data contains levels, or samples I should say, from six benches or levels. Each one of these maps shows the spatial pattern of gold grades at one of the six elevations or benches. 
The red and magenta colors indicate the highest gold grades. That is, the red and magenta colors indicate samples whose grade is equal to or higher than the 0.8 quantile of the blast hole sample distribution. The elevation differences between benches is 4 meters. It's very obvious from these maps that the gold mineralization is controlled by either a shear fault system or a system of veins. So we can expect a variogram model with a strong anisotropy where the direction of the major axis of the anisotropy is at an approximate azimuth of 45 degrees. Next, we explore the possibility of a dip angle. It is obvious from the six level maps that the vein system has a vertical extent. We might be able to determine the dip angle by carefully studying the six level maps and measuring horizontal offsets between levels. But there is a better way to check for a dip angle. First, I have rotated all six levels by 45 degrees using the rotated X and Y coordinates shown earlier in the spreadsheet. Then I stacked all six levels on top of one another. And next I colored the highest 10% of the gold grades red and left the others colored gray. And finally, I projected all of the blast hole samples within the white box to a single cross-sectional plane. The fat red arrows indicate the direction at which you will be viewing the cross-section. So here is the cross-section. You will recall that the z-coordinate of the blast hole varies around the exact bench elevation. And so as a result, we get this muddled picture of the projected blast hole samples at various elevations. But I think you will agree that the cluster of red samples has a dipping trend that appears to dip approximately 50 degrees from the horizontal. Okay, secondly, we need to determine the nominal sample spacing of our data. We know the nominal vertical spacing between the blast hole samples is bench height, or 4 meters. But what about the nominal horizontal sample spacing? We can get a pretty good idea of this by placing a regular grid over a map of the blast hole collar locations as shown here. The grid shown here is a regular 5 by 5 meter grid. However, it appears that most of the cells contain more than one blast hole. This suggests that the nominal sample spacing is less than 5 by 5 meters. And thus my guess is that a nominal sample spacing of 4 by 4 meters would be pretty close to reality and will likely work quite nicely as the unit lag distance for calculating sample variograms in horizontal directions. The last item on our list of things to look for with exploratory data analysis is outliers. The easiest way to do this is to calculate a histogram of the blast hole grades with a list of quantiles. We can see from the histogram shown here that the number of samples is 89,419. This is the same number as shown in the spreadsheet. But what we are really interested in is the largest sample values. For example, the largest blast hole grade is 149.67 grams per ton, while the mean is 0 0.664 grams per ton. The coefficient of variation can be calculated by dividing 2.06 divided by 0.664. That's the mean, the standard deviation, 2.06, divided by the mean, which is 0.664, and the result is something a little bit larger than 3. That is a very large coefficient of variation and suggests that we have a highly skewed distribution which is going to make our life 
calculating sample variograms difficult. So from the list of quantiles, <clears throat> then, just to recap, we see that the 97.5th quantile is 3.87. Here we are. So in other words, 2.5% of the blast hole grades have a grade of 3.87 grams per ton or larger. These are outliers. I call them outliers because although they only constitute 2.5% of the total data, they will likely create so much noise in the sample variogram calculations that the final variogram model will likely be a poor model of the spatial continuity of the remaining 97.5% of the data. And thus my suggestion is to delete all blast hole samples with a grade of 3.87 grams per ton or higher from the sample variogram calculations. Then, at least, the final variogram model should be an accurate model of the spatial continuity of 97.5% of the data. So let's summarize what we have learned from our exploratory data analysis. First, the gold mineralization has a horizontal trend with a strike azimuth of approximately 45 degrees. Second, the gold mineralization also has a vertical trend with a dip direction of 135 degrees and a dip angle at approximately 50 degrees from the horizontal. We know that the nominal blast hole sample spacing is 4 by 4 by 4 meters. And finally, all blast hole grades equal to or above 3.87 grams per ton are considered to be outliers and they will be deleted from all future variogram calculations. Okay, that wraps it up for Variography with SAGE 2001 Part 1. In the next video, which is Variography with SAGE 2001 Part 2, I will show you how to set up and execute SAGE 2001 to calculate directional sample variograms. Stay tuned.